bring me in the ring. We're ready to take on the devil. Amen. Amen. It makes uh, it goes real well with the message this morning about getting in the ring. This morning, I want to talk to you that you need to prepare for battle. Every day of our lives, we need to prepare for battle. Because I guarantee you, the moment you start pressing out and being with Jesus and start doing what's right, the enemy will try to come in and trip you up. And it doesn't take long. It could be in the same day that you had a blessing from God, you walk out the door and boom, hit you right in the face. That's why you got to be ready in season and out of season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says for your de the enemy, the devil goes around as a roaring lion. He's toothless, by the way. Jesus kicked his teeth out when he rose again. Come on. We have a commander in chief who's not going to wheel back and make deals with an enemy across the lake and say, we'll bow down with you and we'll make a covenant with you. But unfortunately, there's a lot of Christians today that are doing that very thing with the enemy. If you'll just let me have just a little bit of church, a little bit of God, I can still do what I want to do. And I'll make a covenant with you. When you make a covenant with the enemy, he wants to do nothing but to kill you. We have an enemy that we made a covenant with our country who wants to see Israel dead and the infidel United States dead. We can't tolerate this no more. We defend the Constitution of the United States of America, but most of all, as a citizen of the Lord Jesus Christ, I defend the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is my citizenship. This is what I stand upon. I don't lean upon any other rock but the rock Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I was prayer walking yesterday morning, and uh, it was me, myself, and I and the Lord. So there were six of us there. Yeah, me, myself, and I, and the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. I put on YouTube, and I put on continuous praise and worship, and I just started hoofing it. And I started praying. I started seeking God. I went around the bend and started heading down the street, heading toward my house. And there was another gentleman coming out of his house, getting ready to go walking. He's looking at his, putting a timer on his watch, getting to see how long it was going to take him. I said, beautiful day for a walk. He says, you better get your walk in before the rain comes. I stopped dead in my tracks. I said, you're 100% right. And thank you for speaking to me today. He's just like, okay, that's awesome. He didn't realize what the Holy Spirit just spoke to me. That we need to prepare for rain. Joel 2.28 says in the last days, I will. He said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. But will all flesh receive it? Most flesh is like that hardened ground after drought has happened and they've not done anything to prepare it. And when the rains come, what does it do? It just runs off. You're responsible for your heart. You alone and alone. You need to find yourself in an altar every day saying, Lord, search me. See if there's anything in my life that would keep me from your presence. There's a rain, yes, that's coming. And it's coming soon. He said, I will pour out my spirit, but the love of many have grown cold, and will they receive it? Those who are on the fence will be knocked off the fence right into the place of damnation and fire. And they will become wax even more evil than anything at all. You know why? Because they'll have a form of religion, deny its power, and they will come and execute and destroy the saints of the living God. They'll be the ones doing the execution. They'll be the ones pursuing you and I who live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Not sinners. Sinners are going to flood to the altars and want to know who Jesus Christ is. But those who have been lukewarm, he said, I'm going to spew them out of my mouth. Amen. Listen to the word of the Lord in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. He says, finally, brothers, be strong in who? The Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. There's a day that's evil that is coming upon us, and we're living in that day. 
and having done all to stand, do to stand, stand there for. Don't cave in to what the government might say. You got to accept this. You got to do this. No, you do not. You have to heed the word of the living God. When you've done all to do but stand, stand there for says, I will not. You shall not pass. Hallelujah. Taken from a script in a movie, Lord of the Rings. I love that part. That enemy tries to pass it. You shall not pass. And we have the authority in Jesus Christ to demand and command the enemy to flee from our lives, flee from your home, and flee from your families. You're tired of struggling in your marriages? Then stand up for your marriage and say, no, Satan, this is my wife, this is my husband. I shall not pass. You shall not pass and come through us. No more. Verse 14, stand therefore, having your lawyers guarded about with truth. You're going to have to learn to walk in truth. What is truth? Jesus asked. Pilate looked right at truth. His name is Jesus. He is the truth. No other truth can ever be found than found in Jesus Christ. Loins girded with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness, right standing with God. Who is that breastplate? It's nothing other than Jesus Christ and the sprinkled blood of Jesus when Satan looks at you, he sees nothing but the right standing of you with God. But do you have the blood on? It says every day, take up the whole armor of God. You know, as saints, you can lay your armor down. Listen. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know how you fight hatred and bitterness and warfares of the soul? With peace. When someone comes at you with that voice, that anger, and ah, he says, return quietly your voice. And it says it will cause it to be put asunder. It will deflect off. They may walk away ran and raven still, but you're going to keep your peace. Don't surrender your peace for some idle argument. Jesus, help us, God. Above all, take up the shield of faith. Wherewith you should be able to quench the fiery darts of that wicked one. You have your shield of faith up. It's the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you're not in the word of God, your shield is uh, like a piece of Swiss cheese. It's got up so many holes in it. The enemy just, oh, there it goes. And they fall down. Wonder, oh, God, help me. Put on the whole armor of God. Put up your shield of faith. The word of God and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. This word is sharper than any two edged sword. It'll cut asunder even to the marrow of the bone. Say, man, I just can't get through to that man or that woman or that, or that bad son or daughter of mine. But listen, pray the word of God, pray in the Holy Ghost and he will go into places and gonna say, ow, what was that? Hey, what was that? They're going to get uncomfortable. They may even get crabbier. The storm always looks darkest before the dawn. But it always blows over, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Verse 18. Praying always. How many times? Every day of our lives. With all prayers. Supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance. And supplication for all saints. We're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Your word will not return void. I thank you, God, that, Lord, right now, we stand in the liberty of being able to preach this word without chains, without guns being pointed at us. But there will come a day when that will happen, when our liberties will be stripped because they've been given away by men in high places. But you know what, Lord? My, the word of God says, that I am free, and whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Like Paul, though I may be in shackles and chains, I will praise the Lord, and the chains will fall off. I give you praise and glory this morning, God, that chains this morning are going to fall off, and that you're going to see the liberty and the victory through the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, Amen and Amen. We can no longer sit back and wait for the battle to come to us. We must take the battle to the enemy to the very gates of hell. 
Jesus looked at the disciples and looked at this cave. He said, looked at this entrance, what they called the, the, the gateway to Hades. He said, even to the very gates of hell, my throne and my kingdom will stand. Hallelujah. No longer should we cower in the corner, living in fear of what others may think of us. You're too radical. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd rather be a nut screwed by the right bolt than hanging on to some loop whip. Hallelujah. Rusty nail that's going to break and fall off. Hallelujah. Well, my friends, heaven and hell is pretty radical. Heaven is taken by the violent and the violent taken by force. Hell is the same way. Do you think for one minute Jesus dying on the cross crucified was not a radical thing for a man to die for our sins and rise again he did all that now i follow in the same footsteps i count everything as loss for the glory of the cross i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet but not i it's not i that lives in this body but it's christ the son of the living god and to him I will give the glory. To him I will give the praise. Hallelujah. You want to stop falling short? Stop living like you. Deny yourself. Take up the cross. Follow him. If you're carrying the cross. You can't fail. When you're carrying the cross, you will not lose. You're going to be either bound to the cross or bound to the world. Your choice. And every day you make that choice by the attitudes we choose to have. By the habits we continue to pick up and don't lay them down. Throw them down and destroy the works of the enemy that easily beset your life. Whatever that is. Jesus, help us, God. Hallelujah. It's a pretty radical thing, heaven is. Heaven isn't just going to fall into your lap. Lost souls aren't just going to fall into our church. I think of like that movie Sharknado. Some hurricane or tornado from heaven, they just go weep up all the sinners and drop them in this building. Hallelujah. I know you got that picture right now. You just can't wait to go home and watch it again. <laughs> Not really. But the thing is, God has called us to be in warfare for the souls of mankind. To take the battle to the enemy. Matthew eleven twelve 12 says... And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. You know, I never really understood that completely until really digging and studying. I praise God for commentaries that helps and breaks down scripture. Listen to this. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. The Greek verb may be either in the middle voice saying, forces its way violently into the kingdom. It's not passive. But there is little doubt that the latter is right in rendering when it says the words describe the eager rush, the crowds of Galilee and Judea, first to the preaching of John the Baptist and then that of Jesus. It was as it were a city under siege. They were so passionate and hungry to hear the word of God. They were taken by siege and by force. Roman soldiers all around them, Pharisees and Sadducees said, you need to follow the law. They said, no, this is a voice and a message of freedom, freedom within. Hallelujah. And they ran violently to that message. The violent taken by force, the Greek noun is without article. Men who are violent or use force. The meaning is determined by the preceding clause. The violent are men eager, impetuous with zeal, who grasp the kingdom of heaven, who have a revelation of what heaven really is. And that their lost soul is now redeemed. They can't wait to run and be in the presence of God. I'll never forget as a 10-year-old young boy. It's born again and saved through VBS program. Praise you God for the VBS program. Came to church that next day hungry. I didn't know for what. I'd never heard a message preached in my life. But I couldn't wait to run to that altar and surrender my life to Jesus Christ. And when they handed me a book that was called the Bible... And said it was about this man, Jesus Christ. I braced it like it was my favorite, best friend, and gift in all the world. And to this day, I have hidden in my house the word of God. So the enemy cannot take it from me. That's radical. 
And this was years ago. Because I know just like the third world countries, one day they'll try to take the printed word from us. But they cannot take it out of my heart. They can never remove the word of God from my heart and my life. They may destroy this body, but they cannot touch my soul. And like Braveheart, I'll cry, freedom! Because on the day I die, I'll be in the presence of Jesus, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do not fear those who can touch your body. My goodness, the older I get, I'm saying, hey, Cor, hurry up. I'm doing enough touching my own. <laughs> Hello, help me, Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Benson, Benson's commentary puts it this way. From the days of John the Baptist, that is from the time of his beginning of his preaching and his testimony until the time of the Messiah, he fulfilled his ministry, the kingdom of heaven. The dispensation which admits all persons equally upon their repentance of faith suffered violence. When I gave my life to Christ, my flesh, was, there was a warfare that immediately started happening. I swore like a sailor. But for whatever reason, that fell off of me right away. But there were other things in my life that didn't. So I had to have a choice. It's a warfare within your own spirit to battle the flesh every day. I will not take this attitude. I will not look upon this woman with lust. I renounce it. I put it down. Vain imaginations, unforgiveness. I put it down for the cause of Christ. That's violent stuff. And you're the one responsible, not the pastor. Not even God. You are. It's your choice. Hallelujah. The spirits of men are so excited and animated by desire after the kingdom that as if it were the attack of a siege, men of all sorts pressing to get in with violence like that. The men are taking place by storm. As if they'd said multitudes are flocking for found me to find him, to be instructed by the nature of what the kingdom of God really is. I'm longing for the day when people press in and just try to beg to get here early to find a seat because they're so hungry to hear the word of God. They're saying, feed me, feed me, Seymour, feed me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. No, they're saying, feed me, Jesus, feed me. They're not looking to any man. But they're looking unto God, and they want to hear his word. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. A kind of proverbial expression requiring the deepest attention to what is spoken by the Spirit. He's not talking about these ears. There are some who are sitting here in rebellion saying, that's his opinion. Folks, I don't share my opinion up here. Every note I have here is scripture. You want to see my notes? I will share them with you after service. The more I, every week that I prepare, I look and say, God, what's my first point? I am your point. Okay. I try to write anything down. I guarantee that pen's going to break or the pencil's going to break. So the Lord will give me a verse and I'll look it up. I say, wow, that's better than anything I could have put down. There it is. That's my point, his point, his word. I don't know what kind of preaching this is. I've I went through, I saw them and they taught this way, that way, this way. And I said, I only know one way and that's the Holy Ghost way. That's all I know. That's all I know. I am sorry if I'll fail your little test. It says, you didn't follow this the right way. And what is this? Where's your point? Here's my point. Here it is. For too long, we put the word of God in man's hands and they've twisted and deceived it and formed their own opinions. And that's why we got the warped little monumental little buildings filled with people going in, going to hell and going out, going to hell. Okay, I stopped meddling. Let's go on and preach again. Okay. You need the word of God. It'll set people free. It works. It still works. You notice these people were passionate. You see, everyone's passionate about something. Your passion is determined by what you think is most important in your life. Whatever you pursue to do, you will lay down everything else to do that one thing. 
You'll lay down everything to say, I've heard the word of the voice of the Lord, and I will do this. I normally do this and this and this, but I'm laying it all down. Elisha, who was out plowing in his, for his father and keeping the land, faithful son. Here comes Elijah along, and he takes his mantle. He didn't say a word. Puts his mantle on him. He goes, let me go tell my parents. Let me destroy this ox and cook it up, and we're going to have a barbecue, and I'm going to burn this plow. You're going to have to burn the plow. That plow represents your past. That plow represents everything. When God calls you, you follow him. When you put your hands to the plow, it says you must do it with all of your heart. Those who have put their hands to the plow and turned away from it are not fit for his kingdom. Many are called, but few are chosen. Because you think for one moment you said a prayer and your name's written in some little ledger up in heaven. You think you're going to make it. wrong -o. Those who put their hand in the plow and don't stick with it are not fit for the kingdom of God. The few, the proud, the Marines. I long to serve in God's, in armies and service for our nation. I long for it. It didn't happen. So what the Lord did, he called me to service an army of the Lord. Oh, yeah. There's no retirement. The benefits are great. And you know what? My commander-in-chief will come soon, and all the kings and presidents of this world are going to bow down and call him Lord and holy. Go ahead and make your plans to try to destroy the apple of Isaiah Israel. Go ahead. Make his day. He don't need the United States of America to protect it. There's a God up in heaven that's got something a whole lot better than any technology man could ever produce. And he's coming back again to reclaim his apple of his eye. And he's coming back again to reclaim you and I. But is your hand to the plow? Are you taking heaven by storm? Or do you even struggle to get out of bed to make it to a Sunday morning service? I'm not looking at anybody. I'm not looking at anybody. You know where your heart is at. Physically this morning, I wanted to crawl back in bed and go to sleep. But the word of God says, just like Paul, I buffet my body and keep it under submission that I will do what God has told me to do. There's a song in the lyrics by a man that I followed very heavily and mentored my life through music. His name is Steve Camp. And the name of the song is called Taking Heaven by Storm. He was mentored by a man named Keith Green. Listen to these words. I'm here to say, Jesus Christ is Lord of all. He's the solid rock on which I stand. Though kingdoms of this earth will rise and fall, we're headed for the promised land. There's no turning back, no matter what the sacrifice. Are you hearing this? No matter what the sacrifice, we're pressing on each day to glory, marching side by side. This is our battle cry. We are taking heaven by storm. We're sold out to Jesus, our Lord. Not given in to compromise. We keep reaching for the prize. Pressing into the kingdom by force. We're taking heaven by storm. Jesus said the meek will inherit the earth. Heaven is taken by the poor. See how much eternal life is truly worth. You got to lose it all to save your soul. The only way you can see a soul saved, he says, but denying yourself 100%. You've got to say, Lord, I will follow you the rest of the days of my life. And it's got to be a prayer you do every day of your life. As far as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There's no turning back, no matter what the sacrifice. So keep pressing on each day to glory, marching side by side, taking heaven by storm. It's heaven, do or die. Raise the gospel banner high. There's no turning back, no matter what the sacrifice. We're pressing on each day to glory, marching side by side. This is our battle cry.
we're taking heaven by storm. Do you really want to see the lost saved? I want to challenge you. Your commitment is not only where your mouth is, but where your feet will go. Listen to me. Some of you won't like this. And that's okay. If you're in the army in the battle of the Lord, Jesus Christ, then you'll say, yes, sir, commander-in-chief, which is Jesus Christ. I'm sending the message from him. In that prayer walk, the Lord told me something. It's much bigger than your little walk around the high school and grade school. It's much bigger than just Staunton, Illinois. You have people in your congregation that represent their communities. Everyone here in the sound of my voice, you represent your community. I want you to start walking and praying over your territory. Not going to their doors. Not going up to them and saying, hey, I'm here to prayer walk for you. The enemy is watching and listening. Pray in the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you need him. You're walking with an unfilled backpack. And you need a full backpack to fight the enemy. I'm here. You know what church is about? What I'm doing right now. I'm preparing you for battle. Because whether you like it or not, you walk out these doors, it's hitting you right in the face. The same temptations that called you to fall. And if you think for a minute, I just wanted to come in church and hear a good sermon and listen to preaching and to hear some music and enjoy myself and get the fuzzies and go home. Are you kidding me? Unfortunately, that's what's happening to our Marines right now who have to guard their pulse without a gun and get shot and killed by the enemy. That sickens me. But unfortunately, that's what ministers are teaching their people. Oh, just come as you are. Here's a nice little program so we can get all the people that are relevant and get them fill this house and we'll send you back out so you can be slaughtered by the enemy. No weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to tear down the strongholds. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. But I want to challenge you. If you live in Gillespie, raise your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know Marlene can't walk, but she can pray. How many in Litchfield? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Thank you. Mount Olive. Beneld. Hallelujah. Staunton. Sawyerville. Staunton. Warden. Oh, that city really needs prayer, hasn't it? I came from Warden. Can any good thing come from Warden? That's like Nazareth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless him, Jesus. We need, to, we need to pray and claim your neighborhoods. Maybe you can't walk very far, but you can stand out in front of your neighborhoods and walk back and forth and start praying the Holy Ghost. You know what the first thing is going to happen? God's going to actually give you a heart for him. We've been behind our closed doors in our houses. We, we, get, we get in our widow cars. We drive to our widow churches. And then we drive back to our widow houses. We go to our widow jobs and we do it all over again. And God's saying, there's all kinds of fish right here. Why are we not fishing? Why are we not planting and sowing and reaping? This is time to plow. Prayer is plowing things you cannot see. Put on your worship music. Put on your little headphones. I had mine in my pocket playing out loud. And when I went some to some of the neighborhoods, it was so quiet, it started echoing. I said, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Let it echo. Let it ring. Hallelujah. That's what I want to challenge you to do. Get beyond yourself and get into the battle. I never was a sideline kind of guy. Playing basketball or baseball, I hated it. I didn't do all that running and everything just to sit on the sideline. But if you're not going to do your best, that's where you're going to be. Shake off your sword, sharpen it, and prepare it and get the rust off. Prepare for battle. Philippians chapter 3, and this is in closing, which means nothing. Okay. <laughs> Remember, I don't have any points, which means I don't have a period at the end of my message either. Hallelujah. But the God does. Amen. Aren't you glad he does? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. 
write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of them who their conscience. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. There's a lot of churches who have put their confidence in the flesh and that's how they're growing the church. Compromising the truth in God's word. And you'd be surprised, they call them mega churches. Full of thousands of people who have the hippest music, the finest bands and groups, will hire out people from Walt Disney World to do programs for their children, church. Wow. There you go, right? That'll bless them spiritually, won't it? Because their conscience is led by their flesh. If I can just look good, pad the numbers, look what I did for you, God. Depart from me. I never knew you. And by the way, all these behind you that are waiting in line to hear the same thing is your fault. Listen, though I might also, verse 4, have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof, he might trust in the flesh. I more. Paul said this. I was circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. He had it all together as far as religion had it going. But listen, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteous with his law of blameless, I was using the law to kill the people in the church. I had zeal. He had religion. He was blinded, though. By his own ways. Verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. He threw away all of his teaching that didn't represent God or Christ. He threw away all of his own zeal to persecute the church, to follow Christ. Verse 8. Yea, doubtless, <clears throat> and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. We do not count them but dumb. Are the things in your life which you momentarily enjoy pleasure of? It's like going to the restroom. Or going outside where your dog had just went to the toilet. Picking it up and partaking. That's how Paul looked at it. When the thing that you think is so precious to your flesh becomes like dung, you know that your heart has been blessed and you're hungry for the things of God and his holiness. But if the things of the world and the passions and lusts thereof still look good to you, you need to get back in the altar and say, God, help me. Help me, Lord. I don't know when that day will happen for you. I know what day that was when it happened for me. And I'll never forget it when he set me free. From the cares and lust of the flesh. But you know what? The closer I get to the Lord, the more he reveals how much more dung I need to get rid of. I've never seen dung smell good. I've never seen it really look good. The only good poo I've ever seen, they always brag about, is the firstborn baby's first one. Oh, look how precious. I was an honest grandfather. I said, what is precious about that? It's his first one. No, it's not. It's his first one out here. <laughs> oh. I'm just here to tell you. Poo is not precious. It's neither a sin. <laughs> in the verse 9, he said, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. What is law? But that which is through the faith of Jesus Christ, the righteousness by which God, by faith, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. You see what brings him joy now? is suffering for Christ. You know what he longs for? For the same struggles as he struggled, his Savior struggled in crucifixion. That I might obtain even a greater resurrection 
that I would have on my own, but that to Jesus Christ, I will cling to the cross. If by means I might attain unto the right resurrection of the dead. Verse 12. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that, if that I may apprehend, if I may just be touched, the hem of his garment, Perfection I'm striving for. I'm, perf I'm striving for Jesus. He is perfection. I've nowhere near attained. But I'm a whole lot better off than I was a year ago. Or six months ago. Can you look at your life and say, God, I am better off today than I was yesterday. That if I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended by Jesus Christ. You see? The more I try, if I take one step toward him, he takes two toward me. That's the grace and mercy of our Lord. I don't care where you slept or laid your head. I don't care how far you've fallen into sin. If you'll cry out to Jesus, he will forgive you and embrace you as a son or daughter once again. But stop sinning. Stop doing the thing that destroys your spirit. Turn your back on it. Verse 13, brethren. I count on myself not to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me. I now am reaching forth unto those things which are before me. And let me make this perfectly clear. What's before me is not a vision of where to take this church and try to raise it to thousands of people. You know what's before me? I see the arms of Jesus Christ. He is in heaven waiting for me to make heaven and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what I'm reaching for. The cares of this world, the pressures of how we should run a church is nothing, nothing compared to the salvation I have through Jesus Christ, the rock upon which I stand. You see, you can't look back if your focus is on what's in front of you. Believe it or not, I used to be in cross country. Yeah, that's called running. <laughs> and used to be able to run very well. Coach always told me, don't worry what's behind you. Press on what's in front of you and run your best race and just see where you end up. And that's all that Lord's requiring you to do. He doesn't want you to look at me, my brother, or anybody else. But most of all, he doesn't want you to look at your past. Unless it's to glorify God for what he brought you out of. Hallelujah. Forgetting those things which are behind, I am reaching forth to those things which are before. I press toward the mark, the prize of the high calling of God of Christ Jesus. And this calling is not ministry. The high calling is, come home, Jack. I love you. There's no higher calling than that. He loves you. Cecil Brockman, come home. That's the high calling. He's redeemed you by the blood of his son. But we weigh everything but what we can and can't do. And he just, we frustrate ourselves because we can't do it. Give it up and give yourself to Christ. Set yourself free. I stand here delivered and free as a minister because I'm not ministering my own strength. I walk away from here and I say, what in the world did I just say? It wasn't me. It's the Holy Spirit person living in me. It's not for me to boast about anything that happens in my life. Verse 16, nevertheless, we're until we have already attained, let us walk. Whatever you've already attained, stay in that and walk in that. The word of God says in the armor of God, when you've done all to stand, stand therefore. Sometimes all you can do, sometimes all you can do. It should be everything about our lives. We look back and say, thank you, Lord. I'm redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And then he says, my precious son and daughter, I love them. He doesn't look at your failures. Or what man may say, hey, what are you running in your church? You're still at 70 or 80? Well, what are you doing? Church over here has four or 5,000. 
and they have all kinds of this program. They got this, they got. Thou shalt not compare and covet thy neighbor's gifts. Bless them. Bless them. Hallelujah. Let us therefore as many be perfect, be thus minded. Hallelujah. Verse 18. For many walk of whom I have told you often. And now I tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. He's not talking about sinners. Did you know a sinner is not an enemy of the cross? You know what an enemy of the cross is? It's someone who has a form of godliness, but denies the power to change. It's the Pharisee and Sadducee who stand in the robes of righteousness. Their cups are all beautiful on the outside, but inside they're full of dead man's bones. They will crucify a gnat if it follows Christ. How dare you dare to try? This is the law. Following this because I look good. That's the enemies of the cross. Notice Paul is weeping. Who's he weeping for? For the same folks who live like he did, who have not changed. They're still trying to kill the saints. They're still trying to fight the law by somehow creating more law so they gain greater power and greater egos. Oh, Jesus, help them. Verse 19, whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. And whose glory is in their shame. Who mind only earthly things. They run things by earthly manner. What can I do to please you today? Let's go through the farms and do the things that look right in the eyes of God. But there's no cost. You don't have to lay anything down. Over a period of time, you'll gradually change. I got a book on sale for you today. How to overcome your own thoughts of how wonderful you really are. You send a donation today of $1,000, and I will bless you with a seed offering. Yeah. <laughs> Take your book and burn it. And if you don't change, you and the book and both can go where that belongs. And then take up the word of God and start preaching the word of God that saves and touches lives and really redeems them so that they can be in heaven one day. I could care less how many times you're on Larry King Live. Wow. Excited. Get me on there. You want to ask me the question about how I feel about something? I'll tell them the truth in the word of God. They won't let people like me on there because they want to hear a watered down gospel. They want to hear it. It's okay. Oprah Winfrey's got a new show coming out. Advertising, do you believe? Do you have faith? Then throughout the video, different pictures of different gods. Buddha, Hindu, Muslim. Even shows a really good seed of gospel group. They're dancing and everything, baptizing people in water, but instantly goes to other faiths. She says, I believe in a higher power that determines my life. Something bigger than me. And I love the quote below it. Yeah, his name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Bow to him instead of your powers, and maybe you might get saved. Thank you, Jesus, for the truth. Amen. Hey, thank you. It's okay. See, man, you're not conforming. I'll never conform. Like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I will not bow to any golden idol. No man is Lord and God. Hallelujah. Verse 20, for our conversation is in heaven. Our conversation, our reward is in heaven. If you're looking for some benefit here, stop looking. It rains on the just and unjust alike. But you should be pursuing the things in heaven. Whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21, who shall change our vile bodies. He's not just talking about the physical, though the older I get, the more vile it becomes. Hallelujah. I'm working on trying to make it not as vile. But the thing is this. He's talking about your flesh. Bars of prison hold my soul. But one day, I will rise on eagle's wings. No more sorrow. No more pain. Who shall change our vile body? that it may be fashioned like unto the glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. I'm looking forward to that day. But the Lord is wanting us as the army of the Lord 
to prepare for battle now. So he does not steal that which is precious to you and to him, your soul. You may suffer many things in this life. He said, but be of good cheer. I overcame the world. How do you overcome? Through crucifixion and death. Even the sinless Christ died to himself so that you and I might have life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. This morning, if you know that God has spoken to your heart and you're prepared for battle, stand upon your feet right now. Stand upon your feet right here, wherever you're at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. This is great. We're going to close with a word of prayer. Now, here's the thing. You need to be in the word of God. You need to be without pray, without ceasing in your life. And knowing that the Lord loves you. Tonight we have intercessory prayer. If it are possible that you can come, come and seek the Lord while he may be found. We have seen miraculous things happen through prayer since even we started prayer here. Miracles have taken place. Answered prayers. Not just here, but across the world. Prayer changes things and changes us.